You are watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Arecchio, and this is news that makes you healthier. What are we talking about today, Randy? Big topic today. We have uh, JJ Virgin, Yay. You know, New York Times best-selling author. She has PBS specials running all over the country. She's on the Dr. Oz Show. I mean, she's the one to watch lately. Second to you. Mm, not as second to as, me. Uh, not no, second to me you're at big. all. big. You've got a book coming out. Uh, you got a lot of things happening. It's exciting. I, um, one of the, the best things that stuck with me I ever heard JJ say is, a rising tide floats all boats. And really, like we all kind of stick together because we want to see a shift in the food supply and a shift in our nation's health. And she has done that tremendously with the virgin diet. Yeah, so, the, so I'm going to interview her on the food sensitivity uh, yes. topic. Now, I've known, she says we go back 20 years. I think it was more like about 17 years. Okay. But she was talking about this back then. And I found myself about 30 pounds overweight, and she was the first person that told me the truth. You know, she says, Randy, you're not fooling anybody with that big giant suit. I was wearing like these 44 or 46 regular suits. And, uh -huh. uh, and she said, you know, if you lost about 50 or 65 pounds, you would look pretty good, right? <laughs> was and that hurtful or it no was okay. it wasn't it, you needed something that direct and she was responsible for shifting your life you credit her with well, losing all the weight and i like the healthier. truth back then she was accessible and she was my nutritionist yeah so uh and i like when somebody tells me the truth uh -huh. because i was surrounding myself with a bunch of people who said what's wrong with a little bit of pizza what's wrong with a this or that right yeah. and so i shifted my friends and circle of influence mm -hmm. and uh and then my taste changed. And uh, you know, I told her on the show that since I met her, or since I've been around her, I put on about 12 or 13 pounds because you get a little sloppy with your, with your eating. And her advice, which I thought was great, is I need to network with other like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Like going on your program, your online program at The Whole Journey, or her program, mm -hmm. reading her books. And frankly, I read her book again, yeah. and it inspired me. It got me, because a lot of us know what we have to do. We have to be, we need a coach. I think you're right. We all need a coach. And like you say, you never have it forever and then you're done with health. We always have to manage our health and life happens. And so, right, now you're kind of re-inspired and you'll get back on her program. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. It's good. So, okay, so we're going to go to the interview. Yeah. And then we'll come back and we'll discuss uh, the interview. Let's do it. You're watching the Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. Our first guest, uh, you, you may know, she has two New York Times bestsellers. JJ Virgin, and today we're talking about the Virgin Diet. Uh, JJ, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, for people that don't know your book, I've read your book, by the way. Great. Book. I hope so. Are you following my book? Uh, I'm trying to follow your book. Trying. Yeah, yes. we'll talk about that, man. Okay, we'll have to talk about that. Now, for people that don't know the book, what, what's it about? It's about how food intolerance is the real cause of weight gain. And what happened was I was working in doctor's offices in the area of weight loss resistance, and I was doing a simple food sensitivity test, and I noticed a couple really big things. Number one, people would walk in and they'd have joint pain and headaches and fatigue, and they couldn't lose weight and skin problems. And we'd do this food sensitivity test, the same foods always showed up. Okay. We'd pull those foods out, and those symptoms would go away quickly, but the side effect was fast weight loss. And I wish I could say that over like the course of a couple months of looking at hundreds of these tests, I went, oh, this should be like the foundation of a weight loss program. But it took a couple years because I just wasn't convinced it was always those same foods. And it might not be, you know, I say drop seven foods, lose seven pounds, just seven days. Hey, you may not have all seven that are an issue. Most people have a couple so of them. So your but premise is if, if you, not your premise, but if you drop these seven foods, you can drop seven pounds. Well, so what I saw, and now there's been over a million people who've done this, but what okay. I've seen is the majority of people in the first seven days lose seven pounds. Will everybody know? Okay. Some people lose more. I've had someone lose 14 pounds, which blew my mind. Some people might lose one or two. But what it's doing is changing the whole conversation around food, and that's what's so important. You know, we're so used to going, okay, well, I'll just do everything in moderation or I'll watch my calories. But if you have a food intolerance, a little bit of it will create a big problem. So all of a sudden we're pulling these foods out, we're letting your immune system cool down, and then we go back and we, t we test them one at a time so we can connect the dots between what you're eating and how you feel and what you weigh so you can say, hey, this food works for me or this food really doesn't. How can a food that you may have a mild allergy to make you fat? That's the part I don't get. You don't get it? No. 
Okay, we'll test this out on you. Okay. All right, so you're going to be a guinea pig with this. So there's a variety of ways that this happens. And first off, I like to call it a food intolerance or a food sensitivity because when we think of allergy, we think of the kid with the peanut allergy and mm -hmm. their throat closing up. There's a couple different ways that you can become intolerant to a food. Obviously, genetics plays a role. That could be celiac disease or lactose intolerance or fructose malabsorption, um, but also immune issues. And those are those immediate reactions like the kid with the peanut allergy or delayed reactions, which are the most common, hugely common but we don't put it together because so many of the symptoms are things we were taught to believe are normal for us, okay. like the gas and bloating and the joint pain and the headaches and you know, feeling a little puffy. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, there's also the hormonal issues with it. When you're eating foods that don't work for you, you can get insulin resistance, leptin resistance, high cortisol, all those things can make your body better at storing fat. And remember, when you're doing something that's basically toxic to your body, your body responds to toxins by holding on to fat and cooling down. So the message to your body is get inflamed. We know inflammation changes hormone response, mm -hmm. right? And also you start to crave the very foods that are hurting you, which just starts to make you worse. So that's how it can lead to weight gain or just the inability to lose weight. And we should mention, I mean, you've been talking about this for quite some time, at yes. least 15 years. Yes and medical doctors from all over the country, all over the world, attend your lectures. What is your topic when you talk to uh, like medical doctors, nutritionists? Well, the area I love the most is weight loss resistance, and it all happened now 30 years ago, my gosh. When I first started, I was paying my way through graduate school as a personal trainer, and I was being taught in school that you, to lose weight, they should do a lot of aerobics, which we all now know is craziness, makes you actually old and fat. Um, but do a lot of cardiovascular um, workouts and then cut your calories down. And what I noticed was, especially in my clients, they tended to be 40 to 50 year old women, this was not working. Okay. Now, as a personal trainer, if you are doing something that's not working, people don't continue to come to you, right? Yeah. So it didn't matter what I was being taught in school, it wasn't working. And I started looking at what other people were doing out there and going back into the research. And that's where I shifted exercise into burst style training and resistance training and stopped doing all that crazy endurance training. And that's where I started to look at food as information. And it's a big shift from food as calories and our body being a bank account to food as information and our body is a chemistry lab. And these foods actually send messages. And I don't know about you, I want the, my food to say, hey, burn fat, don't store it, right? Interesting. Okay. Now, I wrote a list of questions because, you know, some of the people that watch our show, especially with Krista, and they said, Randy, we want these questions answered. So I'm going to go off okay. the list. I it hope says, I can answer them. Yeah. I'll try so. hard. So I never have time for breakfast and I'm not particularly hungry in the morning. How can I make this dreaded meal easier and still get to work on time? I am not a fan of breakfast skipping. And I do hear from people, they just can't face food in the morning. I think some of that's a retrain because I find most of the time people can't face food because they got home from work and they started eating and they kind of ate till they passed out, right? <laughs> so then they're not hungry people in the morning. Do that. Yeah, you want to eat. Do people do that? I think that I've heard that people do okay. over the years. So what you want to do is eat within an hour of waking up. And this is where the virgin diet shake just rocks it because it's so easy to do and it really takes out all the excuses of I'm not hungry because literally, I mean, who can't throw things into a blender? I use my virgin diet all in one shake and I use some so delicious coconut milk or almond milk, unsweetened, very important. Okay. Little chia seeds, avocado, you can throw in spinach or kale, you what don't even stevia? taste it. Can you it. put stevia in there? Well, you don't need to. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm moving into sugar and so there's a whole thing with do you really want to train your taste buds to want more and more sweet? It will be sweet enough with the shake mix and a okay. little bit of berries in there. But the nice thing there is, you know, you're not sitting down and eating a whole meal, but you're getting in clean, lean fat. This is what I help people do on the virgin diet plate is clean, lean protein, healthy fats, slow, low carbs, and loads of non-starchy vegetables. It's all in that shake. And those together help keep your hunger. You should be able to go four to six hours before you need to eat again. So they help keep your hunger down. So you like, so I'm clear, you like the shake mm -hmm. in the morning? Yes, shake okay, in good. the morning. Start the day with the shake and eat within an hour of waking up. And don't be a big baby about, I can't eat breakfast in the morning. You can put it in a cup. If you have to drive and dine, you can still do it. Not my favorite, but it's better than nothing, right? Or you can even get to work and put it in your blender bottle and shake it up and do it. But it's so critical to flip that over from being top heavy in the evening to getting going in the morning and getting yourself 
going. You know, if you, you want to go 12 to 14 hours before you eat again, but if you go too long without eating, as we know, you start breaking down muscle. Okay, let's talk about these seven foods. Back to the food intolerances. What are these seven foods? And what if somebody says, you know, they don't think they have a food intolerance, why should they pull them out? Okay. And how long should they pull them out? Now you just asked me a lot of questions yeah. all at once. Okay, I'll try to keep them separate in my brain. Gluten, dairy, soy, corn, eggs, peanuts, sugar, and artificial sweeteners are the seven. Okay. Sugar and artificial sweeteners are all in one category, and those really are much more of a hormonal response. But gluten, dairy, egg, soy, corn, peanuts, sugar, and artificial sweeteners. You do not know if you have a food intolerance until you pull these all out for at least three weeks. People think they don't have a food intolerance. 90% of the people I put on the program notice a significant difference, just from gluten alone, by the way. There's no single test that you can do to look at all of these different foods out there because of the different ways we become, can become intolerant to the food. The best way to figure out if you're intolerant to a food is to look at the most common symptoms that we start to regard as normal for us, so we just blow off and we accept, or okay. we think, I'm just getting older some crazy stuff like that, like gas and bloating, joint pains, any autoimmune disease. This is the autoimmune diet. Um, headaches, fatigue, low energy, cravings, I can't lose weight. All of those things, skin problems, you've got to think of food sensitivities as the first line of defense. Any GI issues, this should be the first thing that you do. So any um, like moodiness, mood disorders, this should be where you go. Um, the reason that you need to be on it for a couple of weeks and you need to take them all out. So you take all seven foods yeah. out. So okay. let's say you're sitting on a chair and you've got seven tacks that you're sitting on. How does that feel? It's terrible. Not, not so good, right? Yeah. But you say, okay, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up and I'm going to take six tacks away. And I'll sit back down. And how does that feel? Maybe even worse. It still hurts. Yeah, okay. So you can't, you can't say, you know what? I'm going to take six out because here's what happens. People will go, you know what, I'm going to take, I can do this. I'll take them all out except for the cheese, right? It's usually the cheese or the gluten. Okay. It's the food that's their kryptonite because one of the classic hallmark signs of a food intolerance is craving a food. It's part of what happens with that immune response. And so you sit there and you go, and let's face it, both gluten, dairy, and sugar all have an opiate-like effect on the brain. We are addicted to them. So we have that issue as well. Now, one of the things you say in the book is anybody can do it for 21 days. Yeah, come on. We can do anything for 21 days. Do you find that 21 days. I mean, people yes. can do it for 21 days? Once you sell them on this, first of all, I give you simple swaps. So it's not like you go, what the heck should I eat? I think that's where so many people fail in anything they do is they don't know what they should have. But if you know, hey, you're going to start the day with a shake. This is simple. Okay, so I'm going to replace because let's face it, most people have dessert for breakfast, right? That latte and a muffin is a milkshake and a cupcake. Let's okay. call it what it is. I mean, right. a cupcake and a muffin look the same without the icing. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So most people really blow it at breakfast, and that starts a whole roller coaster of blood sugar all day long and sets them up to fail. For their cravings, etc. Cra yeah, and then you know, okay, so like, let's make this simple. If you love dairy, have coconut yogurt. Have have almond milk. And this is all in your book, right? And you have a cookbook. Swaps all the way well. through, and I have a cookbook. And a lot of people are using that cookbook who just have, say, they've got kids, they put on a gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free diet. Mm -hmm. um, because, by the way, people don't complain about the food. They go, why are we eating so great? This is not weird food. This is simple stuff that we would normally eat. We've just pulled out things that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Like, why are they putting gluten? They put gluten on french fries. For goodness sake. Interesting. You know, you don't need these things in these foods. Let's just get back to great vegetables and quinoa and lentils and grass fed beef and wild salmon and raw nuts and seeds. I mean, healthy, yummy food, right? One of the questions uh, that, that people have is where'd you come up with these seven foods to pull? I mean, what's the science behind this? So, again, when I started with this, I wasn't looking for this. This all just, it was kind of a stumble upon. And I was doing food sensitivity testing and the same foods kept showing up. The classic ones on IgG testing were dairy and eggs. And eggs really bummed me out. I think of them as nature's perfect food, but I saw so many, 70% of the people were reacting there. Gluten's a different way of testing, and what I saw were about 40% of people reacting there, but 90% of the people I pulled gluten out of their diet, they noticed a significant difference. And then the next tier was corn 
and soy and peanuts. Sugar is different, and you're not going to pull sugar out 100%. You can't. You wouldn't be eating, you know, you'd be living on whale blubber. So, okay. right? Okay. And I mean, some people do, but that wouldn't be, that's the different diet. That yeah. would be the whale blubber diet. But, you know, you really limit your sugar. I say no more than five grams of added sugars and don't go eat the things that are high in natural sugars. Like we're not going to be having any um, apple juice, for example, okay. which is worse than a Coke. Is that right? It's right. Yes. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to move down the list. So what about sleep? Sleep. You're big on getting a lot of sleep. How does that help with, you know, you know, truthfully, if, if I could pick one thing, people would think that I was going to pick the foods. But if I could pick just one thing that all the viewers today would say, OK, I'll go do that. Just one thing. It would be to get a good night's sleep consistently. Even one poor night of sleep, failure to get the seven to nine hours of recommended consistent quality sleep each night sets you up for weight gain. In fact, the study shows that. How so? That, How so? Okay, so it's, it's a hormonal disaster is what happens is one poor night of sleep, and this is, again, it's going to get worse over time because a poor night of sleep, you wake up in the morning, you need more caffeine, you're not going to exercise, you're going to crave more sugar. So what happens when you get a poor night of sleep? You're more insulin and leptin resistant. What that means is your body is better at storing fat and worse at burning it off. So if you can't burn off fat, then you're running on sugar. You're a sugar burner, so now you're going to crave more sweet. Your serotonin's lower, so you're craving more sweet. The stress of the poor sleep actually makes your gut leakier, so now you're going to have more food intolerance. Wow. So all of the, it just starts a big hormonal disaster that tells your body, store fat, don't burn it off, and crave sugar. I mean, anyone who's not slept well the night before knows they don't wake up and say, I'd like some salmon, right? They're yeah. like, where's the muffin, mainline the latte, That's let's true. go, right? And it sets it up all day long. And then, so now you're doing things that give you false energy all day long, and then all of a sudden you have to go to sleep, but your mind's racing and your body's tired, and you're like, ah. So it gets you into a really bad cycle. It's like cycle. you're wired and uh, tired, tired at the that same tired time. Tired and wired thing. I can so, yes, to that. sleep is probably the single biggest thing because we know stress can make you, you know, age faster and gain weight. Well, one of the biggest stressors is poor sleep. Now, stress can lead to poor sleep, but poor sleep creates stress, creates higher cortisol, and again, that insulin and leptin resistance. When you eat like this, as outlined in your book, do you find that people are sleeping better? People that are having difficulty sleeping? Um, you know, I've heard that it's interesting because I had this one client who said the biggest thing I've noticed is my sleep. And I thought that's, that's interesting. I think some of it is because they're pulling themselves off some of the stimulating foods and the toxic responses from food. But I will tell you this, the third cycle of the book really is focus on sleep. I think for a lot of people, they have to really put the energy there because for most of us, we steal from sleep. We just don't put the priority there. We're doing, we're using our electronics right before bed. We don't have a nice, good sleep hygiene routine for the first, for that last hour before bed. We're not making time to get our seven to nine hours of sleep. And so the eating well is definitely going to help. It's going to help in every area of your life. But I think it's bigger that you have to put the priorities in place for it too and actually block out. I've had people go, I don't have the time to get that amount of sleep. I'm like, you have to. <laughs> okay. So backing up, you, you mentioned that it's the ultimate autoimmune disease diet, like arthritis. How does it play a role there? Why is it so good for people with, with these problems? Yeah, autoimmune disease is the number one umbrella disease worldwide now. I think we just okay. don't, we, we don't talk about it. But when you look at it, you're going, why is that happening? Okay, so we might have these genetics in here for some autoimmune disease. And I've had clients say, okay, I've, I had one autoimmune disease. The doctor's watching this. I'm like, if you have one you're going to have more. You're flipping your switches on in your genes. What flips those switches? Well, one of the biggest ones that flips it is gluten. Okay. So if you look at it, I had a great mentor early on in nutrition that said, the sicker you are, the farther back in your ancestry you need to go. So you want to look at these foods that are newer to us or have been genetically modified or genetically engineered. And really, our body is like, what do we do with this? That are flipping on some of these switches. And it becomes very clear that gluten dairy and soy are key in triggering some of these autoimmune responses. Have you had people that have things like arthritis or some of the other autoimmune yes. that say, I or they say I'm symptom free? Yes, I've had loads of them, but one that, I, that just blew me away was this gal with psoriatic arthritis. And the, you, know, you have to take these immune suppressant drugs when you have autoimmune disease. And she worked in a school. Well, she couldn't go to the school with the little kids because she kept getting sick. So she was missing work. She had grandkids at home. She couldn't play with them. Her life was going down so fast. And she was searching one night online for anti-inflammatory diets. And she found 
the virgin died. It popped up first. I'm like, I don't know how that happened. You know, divine intervention. She's fine now. She's off her drugs. She has no symptoms. Wow. She's back at school. Her, her whole life is back. It is amazing. So this to me should be what everyone starts with, with autoimmune. And by the way, before you have autoimmune, because if autoimmune, you don't want to ever flip the switches on. So you can see I'm going to be really bold and say, I think this is what everybody should do. And I get a lot of heat for that. People going, you're telling everyone to go gluten free. They're going to have nutrient deficiencies. And I, I can't understand what nutrient that they might be referring to. So you to. never have gluten these days? I do not touch gluten. Well, you know, if I do, the challenge is I feel it. My fingers swell. If I eat gluten, my fingers swell. Um, the biggest ones, gluten, dairy, and soy, are the ones that I stay away from. And of course, sugar is you know, a biggie. And what I tell people in, in the book is you're going to pull these all out for mm -hmm. three weeks. We're going to swap in other foods that, by the way, you're going to probably like better. The toughest time I have with people is at the end of three weeks, we go back and one by one, we pick the heavy So you start bringing challenge. back the foods. Yeah, in. we, what I want to do is connect the dots. So when you eat gluten, do you feel fine or does something happen to you? What do they say? 90% of the people notice a difference. It hits their energy. They get joint pain, they get gas and bloating, and they're like, forget it, I don't want it anymore. And what a different conversation from, I think I'll cheat and I'll just have the cookie too. Okay, I know how that makes me feel. I'm not gonna do that, right? It's totally different. So you go through and you check these foods, but the biggest challenge I have is getting people to rechallenge the foods because what's happened is they found foods they like better, mm -hmm. they feel so much better, and they're like, you know what, I just don't need those anymore. And I really would prefer people not eat gluten, not eat so I think we're better off, but I want you to know how you feel when you do so that you know if you should be 100%, like you have to be hyper vigilant about it, or if they sneak in here and there if you're okay. I mean, my joints hurt when I eat gluten. Does it mean that I have to be hyper vigilant like a celiac at a restaurant? No, but I'm not ordering the bread or the pasta either. Good. Now we are out of time. Uh, and so. Your book is in bookstore, bookstores everywhere. Yep, and the cookbook. You're on Dr. Oz. I mean, you're all over the place. I mean, you're hot right now. Just right now? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, right now, I mean, like, I tell I got to give you a little ribbon. And everybody that I know, they'll, they'll run into, you know, they'll end up mentioning, have you heard of this virgin diet? I go, yeah, I have, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I have, and I'm going to go on it. And I'm going to go Alvarez. on it. I, I don't have gluten or dairy or any of those things. Okay, do you have, do you Just have corn or peanuts once, or eggs? Or? No, I don't have peanuts. Who has peanuts? I don't know. Are there some people, people, eating, there are still, some people eating still having Jif. Yeah, there's choosing mothers out there. You know, I know some people actually think this like a diet food. They could have a, like a, a teaspoon of No one has a teaspoon like of peanut, peanut butter. butter. No one no one has a teaspoon. It's like me with almond butter. If I start with a teaspoon of almond butter, the next thing I know there's no almond butter in the jar, and I don't know what happened. So you have okay. to watch those trigger foods, too. But yes, I would love to see you go through. I know that you keep these things out, but maybe not 100%. So it's worth the three I know. You trial. know, about every month, I will do something. Here, now the truth comes out. And then it, it, it almost takes me through. What, what's your explanation of this? Because I know my, you know my friend Jeff Life, he has a way of similar ravenous appetites. But if he eats badly, mm -hmm. it's almost, it, it's like we have to, it takes us three days yeah. to get back on track. Yeah. Where our cravings are under control. Right. So what's going on there? What's your take? Well, you just fired your brain back up and your immune system. Remember these, when you have a reaction to food, you will actually trigger a response in your immune system and build up these little antibodies that want that and it will, they'll be going, ooh, get that for me. And they're gonna pester you. So if something doesn't work for Interesting. you. Interesting, okay. If you have, and, and also gluten, dairy, and sugar light your brain up. They trigger the reward center in your brain. They trigger dopamine and serotonin and beta endorphins. So if you're one of those people who genetically is higher addiction, cravings type of person, and you light that center up, you're gonna want it again. Okay, good. So, so it's easy to follow. It's Get the book. It's easy to follow. Your cookbook is next. And well, then the you cookbook's, have a book. Yeah, the cookbook's out. Virgin Diet. And we're going to have you back because Krista is going to interview you on uh, your book sugar about book. sugar. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for coming back on the show. You're, you're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. You're watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're back. Uh, my interview with JJ. Yeah. She's great. She is awesome. I'm so happy she came on our show. I'm so happy she was able to come here in person. That was really You got fantastic. her to come down here. That was really, um, she's in town for PBS. She's filming her next PBS special. So it worked out, it worked out it's really tomorrow. well. It's tomorrow. I hope I can make it mm -hmm. in that audience. You're going to be in the audience. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And So that interview was great. How did you enjoy talking about food sensitivities? It was good. It's such an important topic. It was interesting. I found out, actually, 
about 15 years ago, I took a food sensitivity test, found out that I was allergic to eggs uh -huh. or had a mild sensitivity to eggs and to uh, sunflower seeds do or you, sunflower. Do you eat eggs now? Rarely. Oh. But you know, when you stay off them long enough, you could kind of bring them back mm -hmm. here and there, mm -hmm. but you'll know if you feel different or sluggish or gassy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't have those type of symptoms anymore. So what's your takeaway? Because you're the nutritionist. I want to know what are your thoughts? I think it is such a such an important topic and it's at the root of so many health issues. And so a lot of people come to nutrition, like her book says, drop seven pounds in seven days with losing seven foods. And so that's motivation, right, to lose weight, but it's so much bigger than that. And how she said that people are living with these symptoms, gassy, bloated, you know, they're tired all the time, they have endless cravings and a lot of immune issues. You know, we are all seeing so many autoimmune diseases springing up that never really existed before. And so if you can find out the formula, just like a car has a formula for the right gas that it needs, you find out the formula for the human body, it's a completely different experience of life. So those are the, those are the seven most common food sensitivities. In your own practice, do you eliminate most of those foods? The seven known? Mm -hmm. In known. my daily life? You mean for the foods that I eat no, or I mean, in my uh, your, clinical practice? Your clients, yeah, the clinical practice. I, I, I like to run lab work because that's a lot of foods for people to eliminate all at once. But mm -hmm. I typically start getting them off of sugar. The first session people are going gluten-free. And so now I work with clients within the context of this three-month online nutrition program. And, the, and they are breaking up, I call it breaking up with sugar for good. And we're getting them off of gluten because that's the first and then off of pasteurized dairy. Then we get them off of soy. One serving of soy will lower thyroid function by 7%. So those of you guys that want to lose weight or those of you that are thyroid meds, you really need to get off of soy. Okay, good. So you mm -hmm. offer on your website, also mm -hmm. the whole journey, uh, mm -hmm. how to get involved with the, J the JJ Virgin program. Is that yeah, right? the whole journey. I mean, you kind of partnered up with her in a way. Is that right? I really believe in her work, and I would never recommend anything I haven't experienced or I haven't, I haven't, you know, tried myself, and I haven't seen a lot of success. And yeah, I think she's amazing. So thewholejourney.com/jj, you can find out everything that you need to find out because she's doing some very special things for our tribe, which I really am grateful for. And so you know what I like about you? Some free stuff there. For As a nutritionist, people. you have a softer approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have the same philosophy, it seems like, an approach. Is that fair to say? Same philosophy. Mm -hmm. and, but she's more direct. Mm -hmm. Like when she told me that I, if I would lose 60 pounds, I'd be attracted. Mm -hmm. you, that's not in you. Mm -hmm. You have a different way about it. Yeah. But they're uh, both effective. Personalities are different. But, you know, I love that she, it doesn't mean, you know, she's direct, but it doesn't mean she doesn't care tremendously. It's just like a translation. Like in the virgin diet, she talks about, um, choosing, she calls them virgin rewards. So choosing some other way to take care of yourself and love yourself besides these foods or sugar, like getting a massage, getting a manicure, pedicure, doing those types of things that are rewards, that are healthier rewards, make you feel like you're nourishing yourself. I feel the same exact way. I call that primary food, the things that feed you other than food. And so, Good. yeah, we all um, find the personality and the approach that resonates with us. Okay, good. Well, look, mm -hmm. we're, we're out of time. And, uh, yeah. I that was a great interview. Yeah. Well, well thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't talk much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried she had to a lot to say. She is strong, so she can hold her own. It's very good. You've been yeah. wa watching the Randy and Krista show. I'm Randy Alvarez. I'm Krista Arecchio. This is News That Makes You Healthier. Thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you next time.